Chairman, we cannot hear very well. Is the microphone on? It is. We'll see what we can do about that. Oh, and Ms. Ann Garner, you're on deck. Uh, good afternoon. My name is uh, John Newcomb. Uh, I'm, I'm going to speak to the part that I have firsthand witness and knowledge of, and that was the committee meeting that took place uh, in this room of uh, February of this year. Okay, and it was a lengthy committee meeting, <laughs> to say the least, but everyone that was here was given an opportunity to go to the second district and be a representative out of Saline County, out of this committee, okay? Now there were several uh, elected officials that were here that night. Many of them said they couldn't make the dates in March for, I don't even think the dates were set, it was two weekends, okay? A lot of them said they couldn't make it on either of those dates. So they, you know, it, it was a done deal then. Judge Matt Brumley said that he would like to go, but he spoke up and said that he had a family deal that he was already obligated to attend and couldn't make it to, you know what I mean? So anyway, the, uh, I guess the whole thing is, is, you know, we, we, at the end of the deal, that that committee meeting, if I remember correctly, we had 13 people who volunteered to go and I think the motion was made by Mr. Lux to accept the 10 that were 10 of the 13 and then the other three draw straws if one of them could make uh, and that's basically all I have as far as what happened in the February meeting any questions so the, the real question I have is so I'm going to assume that the total number of delegates is larger than 13. Yes, sir. So before that, um, was it, I don't know, 20, 30 something, something, that number was filled already? There were 13 available? Right. Or, or there were fewer than 13 yeah. available in February of this year? I can't speak to that. I'm not going to, you know what I mean? I, I don't know as far as that goes, but I believe, I don't know. So, and I, just, I don't want to sure get to the crux of it. So, if there's, 13 people who wanted to go in February of this year, how many get to go? 10. Only 10 get to go? No, 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 no. See ya. I just need to, I don't know, so I, I'm sorry, I don't need to be, I, I should make well, sure I, I, I don't know the exact number, but I know that that night there was 13 volunteers. Okay. And I believe that we voted on 10 to go, and the remaining three were the draw straws. Hey, we can answer that question for you. Uh, so there are a total of 44 seats. And so um, at the biennial convention, uh, 22 volunteered to go. At the time of the biennial convention, we only had 41 seats. We gained three after the gubernatorial election. So at the, the biennial convention, we had 21. So then, but a subsequent motion was made at the biennial convention that the chairman could appoint anyone who expressed an interest thereafter. And so there were some people who were appointed after the new administration took over in January, um, it was suggested that those people should actually be elected in because there's nothing within the rules that says that appointments can be made by the chairman even though that motion was made and approved by the body. So we elected them in and then volunteers were asked to fill the remaining at the time 10 seats. And so that is what, so those people who were appointed and uh, subsequently thereafter elected in, they were voted in by acclamation. And then there was 13 people that wanted to go in the 10 remaining seats. And so because a date had not been set yet, and there was some back and forth about whether or not people could actually go, they were all, I guess, Mr. Lex, correct me if I'm wrong, he made the motion. They were basically all elected in. The, the remaining three would just have to draw straws if they couldn't, if they all could go. But it was presumed that since we didn't have a date yet, there were going to be some people that couldn't go. And so... They would draw straws to see who would go at that point. Okay, so, so really my question is, are we discussing those three people who had to draw straws? No. <clears throat> go ahead. Let, me, let me clarify. Thank you. We got 44 for Saline County that we were, uh, per the state party rules, we're allowed to have at a district committee. 
of that, 22 are because we have 13 elected JPs and nine elected state or countywide officials. So half of the delegation we have is because we have all those seats with Republican office holders. Um, the challenge here is that apparently what happened is because we didn't have forms, we haven't had them apparently since 2016, 2018 and 2020, uh, we didn't have forms, so the office holders were asked when they ran whether they wanted to serve or not. And obviously, they didn't fill out something because we didn't have any form. And so it was handled by that way, and both the folks that were JPs or countywide officials that decided not to serve, we filled those spots uh, out of the general membership. So not all 22 decided they wanted to go to the district committee, let's say 10 of them did, and the other 12 we were able to fill through them out of the members. This time, apparently, none of the JPs or none of the countywide officials were even asked whether they wanted to serve. Because yeah, so that, we're, we're talking about they were not asked at the filing period from February 22nd to March 1st, 2022. And there's apparently, from what we can tell, the RPA had been providing a form 2014, 2016, and for some reason that form was never sent to the, any of the counties, including Sling County, 2018, 2020, or 2022. So, Mr. Newcomb, I have a question for you. Um, so, during that meeting, and I, I did read the minutes, I really didn't, it doesn't show in the minutes kind of discussion of um, any type of awareness of a problem or an issue with um, to begin with because I, I, I can see in the minutes that there was a motion um, and a friendly amendment made by Doyle Webb as far as um, to add the uh, elected officials so it, what in, in your opinion what what was that discussion about prior to as far as elected officials being on the district in, in my opinion he made the motion to, and, and, and this is my opinion was just you and the elected officials first and then whatever seats are remaining are open to everyone else now when the discussion took place like i said out of all the elected officials that were here the only one that i know of that spoke up was judge brumley and he said that he could make it. so there wasn't any elected officials that volunteered at that point to go to the, the district committee meeting. Um, are there any other questions? So I, I'm going to come back to this. Were the, the 10 people who were elected in February of this year, were there three who were dissatisfied? Is that, are we talking about that? No, there, we, there were 13 volunteers, okay, for the 10 spots. Mr. Lux made a motion to accept the 13, right? And basically the three were alternates in case something happened and one of the 10 couldn't make it. Okay. And then the way I understood it, we are going to draw straws to see which one of the three would go to a filling spot for in case one of the 10 couldn't make it. And so are we, are, is some of that population, are they county officials complaining about that process? That's what I want to know. JPs or, or, or countywide elected, are they complaining about that? Not that I've heard. Well, actually, uh, I can speak to that. Um, so, we, uh, David and I, actually worked to make sure that everyone who expressed an interest in going to the district committee um, got to go. And with the exception, there was only one person who didn't get to go as a member or as a proxy. It's because he let us know too late. And we'd already figured it out. So, everyone from this county committee that wanted to go as a member got to go except this one guy. Now, there are a number of JPs back here. Are any of you, do you have, would you like to speak about your thoughts on this complaint? 